we're going to be covering a wild one today, a potential issue that would delete the home directory of the current user in systemd. And here's a reported issue called refuse systemd temp files purge invocation without config file specified on command line. So this is actually the fix for the problem, but originally reported by Jedanaska, seen on system version issue 256. They did this on Debian and they were using the system D temp files component. So basically you have three different flags you can use with this component. All files and directories with an age parameter configured will be cleaned up. And to understand what system D temp files does, it's a utility that manages temporary files on a Linux file system. It's a tool that can help you clean up temporary files and directories. It basically goes through and just deletes and cleans up temporary files that have aged out. Anyways, there's three parameters here, clean, remove, and purge. Purge is the major issue that we're gonna be looking at today and the unexpected behavior here that I'm gonna call him Jay had. Jay says a lot of warning messages started appearing, which included the path home. What's a temp cleaning tool doing in my home directory? That's no good. My And he says, my heart started beating faster as I hit control C as fast as I could. Turns out a good portion of the home directory got deleted. Thankfully, it seems like it started from the config files and not the actual data. So that's a big deal here. So what happened here? Well, they learned that purge removes all user data automatically. Now it is included in the document that this behavior can happen. In order to reproduce the problem, of course, do not run it, but systemd temp files, they do a dry run here, and then they do purge. If you did it without dry run, that's where you would get this issue. And that would start removing all your data, at least from the home user's directory when it gets to it. And we can all understand how frustrating that could be and where the real drama started here. With an overwhelming dislike ratio, a member from the systemd team replied by quoting one of Jay's sentences saying, not knowing much about the systemd temp files architecture other than that it's being used to clean up temp files, purge seemed like a good idea, which we can all see on face value that you wouldn't expect purge on temp files to really mess with your home, but that's not what was said here. So an option that is literally documented as saying all files and directories created by temp files.d entry will be deleted, that you knew nothing about Sun like a good idea? Did you even go and look at the temp files D entries you had beforehand? Maybe just don't run random commands that you'd know nothing about while ignoring what the documentation tells you. Just a thought, eh? Which coming from the community sentiment seemed like a pretty poorly thought out response to all of this as the system D team did end up making a change against the purge invocation. And another member who actually understood a little bit better here, yet I understand that people would think this SD temp files is a tool that only manages temporary files. And even though that it's explicitly said in documentation, they really need to improve how the command works. Jay, of course, wasn't too happy about the way that things were being addressed. But finally, we came to a solution where Poetering here said, I think we should fail purge if no config file is specified for the command line. I see no world in which an invocation without one would make any sense. And it would have caught the problem here. So basically now, whenever you run system D temp files purge. If you fail to give it a config file, it's not gonna go do anything at all. There's even more to this saga. So I'll post a link in the description below if you wanna keep reading on it. Doesn't make things look too good for system D. Of course, people going back and forth, but there's seemingly a problem with how the Linux community interacts with systemd. They've had troubles in the past with lots of critics in the Linux community arguing that systemd's design is just complex, especially when you compare it to the Linux and Unix philosophies of which increased complexity can of course lead to difficult debugging or even understanding of the system. As we see here, it is one of those scenarios in which someone didn't quite understand because it is quite convoluted to understand. As they admit here, they've also extended the, man, the manual page explanation substantially, matching more closely to what create says. So they've made not only the documentation better, but they've also changed the default of what the temp files, systemd temp files command does. So here it says, insist on at least one configuration file being specified. They did patch this into 56.1. So if you have ever used systemd temp files, I do suggest updating the init system. Other critiques here is that systemd has just gotten too big as an init system as it starts managing more and more of the overall system, including device management, network working, so on and so forth. Lots of critics argue that this is just encroaching and reduces the flexibility for the user into really just adopting all system D components or none at all. There's also portability issues, lock-in concern, and of course, resource usage concerns. Anyways, there's a full change log here between 256 and 256.1. Lots of stuff getting added and changed around. But while system D brings many technological advances, including parallel service startup, a robust dependency management system, integrated service 
service management, the debate is still out whether or not the broader system D philosophy and disagreement with Linux and Unix communities is a problem. I'll let you decide in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, smash that like button for me and think about subscribing below for more videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.